Hi, my name is Bobby, and today in this module, what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on installing Charles Root Certificate into on a Windows 10 box into the Trusted Root Certification Authorities. And we're going to do that using two software programs, Charles 4.01, Google Chrome, and of course an OS Windows 10. We also have some assistance of our firewall that's not really explained during installation. I want to go over that um, relatively soon. But our focus basically is going to be um, on how to view the SSL traffic via Charles. Because maybe you want to, you know, maybe you want to see the methods, how methods are processed in order to incorporate them into your website. You know, maybe you are a beta tester. Maybe you, uh, you like to do debugging. Maybe you're a new user and you just want to spend a few hours and get some hours in on viewing SSL, whether it's HTTPS or if you want to just view port 80 data. Maybe, maybe it's that, you know. Um, whichever the case, you know, this video is going to be able to help you in that area. What we're going to focus on, and it, this is not a video for beginners, but I'm going to encompass it so that beginners can kind of understand. It's 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 not a video for experts because we're not going to go over uh, repeat responses and other features that are thrown at the server um, and edits that are thrown at the server. But we're going to focus on viewing the um, SSL traffic because without viewing it, you can't we can't do any of the the others, right? Okay. So what I want to what I want to uh, talk about is Charles 4.01. And Charles 4.01, um, there's been an upgrade from 3.01. There's been a numerous amount of updates regarding SSL, HTTPS, proxy. If you look over at and I did a, de a default installation, I have a registered license. This is a 30-day trial period uh, installation of Charles focused purely for um, this module. So if you go to your help menu, you'll see if you click your SSL proxy and a flyout menu comes out with some new um, features. Now you may be able to uh, use your old Charles version, a previous version, and you probably installed some patches that are available on the website to uh, and you're you know to, to help you operate. Uh, my advice will be to update because there's you know there's going to be even more features added. Once you start getting new flyout menus, etc., and your ability to save and export and save, like here, the root certificate, and you you don't have the ability to do that in previous versions, then you're talking a different animal. Okay, with that, I want to say this: when Charles is installed, it does two things. It installs two instances in your firewall, and you may not have known. And what what it does install is um, uh, inbound rules. And so let's take a look at that real fast because it's really important. Okay. Hey, Cortana, open my firewall. So the reason why I want to go over this because it's really important and it's going to lead into another conversation, a quick one. If you go into inbound rules, you'll notice that there are two instances. If you go to your protocols and ports tab, you'll notice that there's a TCP connection and there's a... UDP connection, right, for under your protocol ports. Now, basically, you know, both are used for transferring data packets, you know, to and from the server to the client. The difference is TCP connection is, uh, is connection-oriented and UDP is connection-less. Yes. Just understanding this right here will, may solve your problems because you have one instance here and you have a VPN and you installed it out of the box and you never configured it, it's using UDP, usually, 99% of the time. So if you create another instance here, and you do that by creating a new rule. Let's pretend you have one rule. So you create another rule. This rule right here, what you'll do is you'll hit next, next, next. You'll grab the EXE out of the Charles container, out of the path. You go to Charles, Program Files, Charles, and you click that, you'll open it. It's going to create a folder like this, pretty much. And then you'll be able to uh, change some of the different tabs. And the tab in specific you want to change 
is you want to add a UDP. Okay, and the ports, all ports. UDP, UDP and TCP. Like I said, there's not a huge difference, but there is a difference. It's a monster of a difference, but it's not a big difference because the, they both transfer data back and forth from the server. That's all people need, right? Well, with UDP, if you've downloaded torrents, etc., and use different applications, sharing applications, UDP is used. If you notice that, you can change your VPN connection over and over and over again throughout the entire time of downloading that file or application, and you're still are downloading the uh, the application. Whereas if you did that with TCP, there will be some breakups here and there. They also say it's a little faster for torrent, et cetera, UDP. So a lot of people, that's why I, I think that's why it's just set at default UDP. Let's just get out of this real fast. I just wanted to explain that because, I, we, you know, I think that's really important. A lot of people will have problems because of a VPN that they installed after they had Charles. And they're like, okay, now I'm having problems now. And didn't know that um, their VPN is processing UDP. And while Charles is, um, it's old version of Charles, has one instance and it's only TCP. Okay. So you see the network like clashing. It's like, well, they're not clashing. They're just not even talking to each other. Okay, so, all right, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at the Certification Manager uh, Council. I just want to make sure you know that here in our trusted root container, where we're going to put the certificate, that there is no instance of Charles, right? And that's default. It doesn't install it for you. It makes you manually put it where you want it. Doesn't have the authority to put it into the trusted root container. You have to manually do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I just want, first I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna do some recording. I'm gonna sh uh, I, I disable this myself. It's usually enabled, so I'm just gonna click it. If you notice now, there's two checks. Okay, I just want you to view some traffic right now, and and notice that you're not able to see, you're not able to see the responses. I just wanted you to see that. A lot of people, they get, pa they get past this part, it's just there's three red dots or three red triangles. And I think that's their UDP issue, but I'm not sure. So, I mean, there's all types of scenarios and I could have went over all of them, but we're not. We're gonna do this default installation of a, a you know, Charles 4.0 on Chrome using a Windows box. In this case, it's Windows 10. doesn't matter, though. Well, 64-bit is preferable. Okay, so we noticed that we can't uh, view the traffic. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, go to proxies, SL proxy, install a child's root certificate. Install the current user, not the local machine. I do current user because maybe you're sharing your PC with your family members and you don't want to start populating their their uh, their folder, their certificate of authority folder with all kinds of objects. And this way also, if you want to undo something or something you know, happens, you don't affect the entire machine. It's not cross-platform on your entire machine. It's just you're affecting your own local profile. So current user. Automatically select the certificate? No, because it's going to put it into a personal. It's not going to put it in the, in the place you want it, container you want it. It's going to put it into something that, uh, because it doesn't have the authority to do that. Right. So let's hit browse. That's where we want it. It would have put it here. If you select it automatic, it would have put it here or in immediate. So you want this. Select OK. Next. Finish. Now you're going to get this beware button. Huh. You're about to install a certificate from the um, Charles, right? Claiming to be la la la, yes, yes, that's what you want. Okay, not a problem. Um, gives you a thumbprint, just select yes. It's gonna go there. The import was successful. Let's check it. Let's go here, right click, and we're typing the cert mgr.msc again. And we're gonna go here, certificates, and there he goes. All right, so Charles is in there. So without doing any restart or anything like that, let's just view the traffic again. Now, I refreshed it because what I want to do is I want to enable it. So the first thing I do is I'm going to enable it because it's still not enabled, right? We still can't see anything. 
We're still not going to be able to see anything. The certificate's there, but... So what we're going to do is we're going to put Enable SSL Proxy. Now I'm going to clear it again. Because I want a fresh response. There's another response. So now, you, do, you notice the icon change? It's like a lightning bolt. Yeah, once you get that, you know you've successfully installed the certificate. And you've, ex you've successfully enabled uh, Charles to record and it well you successfully um, are you are able at this point to view the data that's in the subfolders so successfully installed successfully enabled and now successfully viewed so you can see the contents you can see the headers you can see the summaries right if you want to you can see the JSON data. You can see the JavaScript. And, and all this is relative to based on uh, you want to know what's happening with queries that you are making to the server from the client. Like I said, maybe you're working on an application and, and you want to know what's going on because something's erroring out. Maybe uh, you want to in another module, I'll be testing responses to the server. It could be in the tens of thousands. You know, credit card servers work like that. We set up credit card servers with Priceline.com, and basically there was like 150 of them. But they all had to handle like 10,000 responses, like within within minutes. So, you know, you would want to be able to test that type of method. Now, you might not be getting that many responses on a server in a minute or so, but who knows? Who knows? You might be the next genius. And <laughs> that's really not a lot of traffic, 10,000 in a minute. Because any given day, it depends on what the item is. Like an iPhone online, yeah. When it comes out, <laughs> your website needs to be able to handle, you know, that type of response. So uh, if you notice here, I, you know, JSON data. Uh, we can go to hex, text, header information. You know, header information changes based on cookie, right? And uh, content summary overview. So that's it. You know, and snap. With this information right here, you should be able to get to the next step. And that's another module. We're not going to focus on, res you know, responses, repeat responses, and to the servers or to nodes. Basically, this. Basically, what we want to do here is we want to focus on uh, enabling SSL proxying, installing Charles Root certificate, so that you can at least view it. And take your time. Go over, you know, test websites, etc. Be careful. You know, uh, if it's not your website, just be careful. But, you know, um. There's many things you can do. So have fun. That's it in a nutshell. Take care.